years and uh, we love it and some of you probably have seen us on YouTube also uh, being interviewed by Michelle and we we bought a house here four years ago and this is home we're not going back to the States <laughs> As a result, other people came to visit us. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. Thank you. I'll see you. Hi, everybody. We're the Fishers. I'm Mike. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Welcome. This is our phone. We're from Scotland. This is our first visit to San Miguel, and uh, we're happy to be here versus the end of so we are here with uh, some of our oldest friends, the Flags, and your newest residents. They just purchased a home here. So, Congratulations. We're in the middle of the town with our oldest friends, and now we have a bunch of new friends as well. So we're going to be here. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> His family's talking to mine. They're saying, how did you guys? <laughs> well, why are you there? First of all, you know, so we're just, we just, we just love it here. And we've met so many friends here that we love it. And more and more, we're going to stay here permanently. Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're the Flags. Uh, this is Rochelle. I'm Jeff. We're originally from Chicago. And, uh, we are now from San Miguel. <laughs> Miguel's sight unseen, just 
looking at YouTube, looking at people talking about San Miguel. So I packed up all my stuff yeah. and my little black doggy, and we got the plane and we came to San Miguel <laughs> since October. Wow. And I love it here. Thank wow. you, everyone. Welcome. I live in uh, Alexandria, Virginia, and I actually was so grateful to stay at Michelle's place in September of 2022, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, I just love San Miguel. I just bought a house here too, and tonight is my first night that I'm going to be staying. Wow. <laughs> It's home. It's home. I mean, I, I, I'm from originally from Brooklyn, but it's just ain't what it was. <laughs> I actually moved down here from New Orleans uh, after living in Africa. But uh, those of you who are thinking about this place as a home, say bye bye upstairs. <laughs> All the way up there in the United States, say bye bye, because people will treat you well. When they said that shelter in place in the states, we thought we could shelter in place in Mexico. And so we've been here since 2020, and we love it. And love the people. Yeah, it's just been fantastic. So if you're thinking about drama, come on down. Yay! Right. Yeah. I, I just got to say the same thing that was echoed earlier. I love being a part of this group. This is so nice. Thanks for allowing us to help. Absolutely. Like Welcome. Please. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Frank Branham. I'm uh, originally from Denver, Colorado. I moved here last September. I'm a permanent resident now. And for all you ladies, I worked for Nordstrom's for many years. Oh. <laughs> 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 I did. I was raised in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, was an adult in New York, and was trying to move to New Orleans. But I, I bought my house ten days before the hurricane, um, and so I didn't did plan to stay down here. I was just going to be here while I was going back and forth to New Orleans to you know, make sure my contractors were doing what they were supposed to do. But by the time my house was finished. There was nobody else living on my block. Um, so I kept staying down here and I rented the house and then that time left. Um, I started uh, and made the commitment to be down here and I love it. I've moved to lots of neighborhoods, now I'm in San Rafael. You know, there's all kinds of building going on there, not much commerce. But when I came, San Antonio was nothing. So I know what can happen in a couple of years. <laughs> Excuse me, I have a little horse. My name is Tim Brockington. My wife is in the States because she's a great grandmother. Ah. So she'll be back eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I, I moved here, unlike a lot of people, I, not, I did not move here because of economics. I moved here because my grandfather, my father, myself, even my grandson had to go through so much hate and discrimination. I'm tired of it, and I told my children to come here. So that's pretty much it. I've been here four years, and I, I don't like San Miguel, but I will leave when I die. <laughs> that's perfect. Who's next? Who's next? You want to start here? Let's start here. Hello, friends. It's a real pleasure to be here. We are currently in Guadalajara. I'm Alex, and this is my beautiful wife, Marie Gladys. We've been married for 48 years. Wow. And we left uh, 
uh, in Florida, our uh, one daughter with uh, two grandchildren, and in Oregon, one son with two grandchildren. So we've been watching Michelle <laughs> since we were in Florida oh, two wow. years back. Oh wow! <laughs> and we told the family that we are moving to San Miguel <laughs> because of Michelle. Because oh. of, because she really made a super job showing us around, showing what's going on in San Miguel. And unfortunately, we ended up being Guadalajara. <laughs> so, the good news is it's not all lost because our uh, list is up in two months. So when I saw her this week and she talked about Black History Month, they're having a celebration. She was already in bed, so I won up. Do you want to go to the Black History Month? <laughs> she gets up, she says, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> so I told her a little bit. It was probably 11 o'clock, 11.30. So I texted, not texted, I emailed her. And I said, do you have any room? And then that's the story. <laughs> we are so happy to be here. Aww. And I gotta tell you, this is since eight months we've been in Guadalajara. This is the, this is the first time we're getting a group that speaks English. Aww. So this is nice. We love it. And we hope that we could be with you guys for more events. Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle. Thank no, no, you. I should say that Thank this you. is the first time we are with family. Uh, now, Thank you. One last thing. <laughs> I want to add, we are both from Haiti. Yes. We were born ah. there. Yeah. Oh I heard that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we live in the States all of our lives. And I met her at the university uh, in Lowell, Massachusetts. We've wow. been together since then. Oh, I and it. I just want to remind you. Because of black history, remember, although they mess us up, we were the first nation yes. for freedom. Yes. Yes. of this last year also and um, I the, when I came initially I really didn't want to but I didn't want my grandkids to go anywhere without me <laughs> so I fell in love with it it's a very magical place I feel such peace here and um, I'm just very happy to now be have a, a residence here where I can come and just Live. Live. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Well, um, so I'm Danielle. Uh, we are originally from Southern California. My mom I, I, and I, myself. We are. <laughs> my husband is originally from Saginaw, Michigan. <laughs> um, but yeah, we went down the YouTube University. You know, rather than, uh, about two years ago. Um, you know. We found Michelle, we found the Yarbroughs, we found so many other people. Um, and we have been talking about living abroad for a couple of years. Um, told my mom we were going to come visit. She came with us. Um, and, you know, pretty much the rest is history. My mom ended up purchasing a home. So we sold our home in Houston um, and moved down here permanently. We moved for permanent as of January 14th. Um, so we're super excited to be here, um, super excited for our kids to see another way of life and experience other cultures and 
you know, just um, like was echoed, um, you know, by um, by Mr. Timothy of you know just getting away from the negativity that is just so heavy in the United States. So we're so happy to see all of you. So excited to meet some of you that we haven't met yet. And um, yeah. What are you doing on March 11th? Oh, that's right, March 11th. <laughs> Myself and Jesse here are going to be performing at Casa Europa. Um, so, uh, if you guys are all interested, we would love to see you all. Um, the tickets are available on sanmiguelsjazz.com.mx. Um, so we'll be performing, you know, soul, funk, and blues. Um, so yeah. Look forward to seeing you guys. Hey. Elton. Yeah. Elton. Oh, I don't have much. I'm Elton. Family. Excited to see you all. I'm the class clown. So <laughs> I, I, now that I'm here, so many people from Michigan, I was gonna start a Michigan club. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited to be here. Uh, like me and Mr. Tennessee talking about the Michigan. For me, it was just so freeing and great to be here. I had the fear of raising a young son and just one day I won't get that phone call that I don't want to get. And I, uh, or her getting a phone call about me that she doesn't want to get. Um, I'm a gentle giant, so if I get pulled over by police, I'm like, <laughs> is my license, is registration, my gun is in, is in the glove compartment. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm so free now, I feel so, my, my anxiety and all that just is gone. So this is a different experience, I'm enjoying it. Um, we're just trying to get the rest of my family on my side to come and visit. My parents, grew, my mother grew up in Philadelphia, Mississippi. So if anybody know about Philadelphia, Mississippi, I still won't go to Mississippi at night. So I'm trying to tell her, come visit. She's like, no, there's so much going on. I'm like, it's Mississippi though. <laughs> <laughs> but what's more scary? Let's go to Mississippi. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I'm um, just had, like, glad to be here. Um, glad to see everybody. Glad to see faces that look like mine and my children. Yay. Yay. Hello, I'm Gloria. I was born in Miami, moved to West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, was there for 20 years. Then I became a grandma, and I took off and went to Virginia. So um, while I was there, I told my daughter and my son-in-law to want more kids while I'm here, get busy, get kids, yes. And then the pandemic happened, and then all the negativity and the crime and killing, I got in a dark place, and I was following Michelle before the pandemic. So. When I got in this depression, I said, I'm calling Michelle and I'm getting out of here. Uh, every day I was crying, listening to the news, and I was in a dark place. And I told Michelle, she's my daughter and she doesn't know it. <laughs> yes, I just love this girl. This sweet lady, yeah, sorry. Me too. See, girl she's for you. my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so my um, daughter and my sister thought that I'm really losing it now. I'm going somewhere in San Miguel. So they came. And when they got here and, and experienced the love from Michelle and Brianna, they were jealous when they left because they stayed only a week. I stayed three months. So I arrived yesterday and my daughter tracked me down through Brianna. I didn't know that. So that's how they are. They, it's like family. And when I finally spoke to my daughter, she said, ask me, how are you? Are you okay? When I opened that door, I literally said, I'm home. Oh, I'm home. So, I'm just so happy to be here. And Ms. Barbara and I hung out a lot. I was here for three months, and I'm back again already. Yes. Yes. It's been six months yet. I'm yes. back again. I love it. Yes. I love the people. Aww. Thank you for you having too. me. Yes. <laughs>
that other places seem to gloss over, but it's here. It's here. Um, I'm a recently reti a retired military army. army. so far. Every corner has a beautiful view. There's beautiful black faces here. It's been a wonderful journey. And of course, we're YouTube University folks as well. You know, Cartes Ross and Merida and Kofi Con Leche and all those folks and Michelle. And after you see so much of this stuff, you come here and you see it. It almost seems unbelievable. But once you're here, you see that reality is a much different thing here than it is in America. So, like, I'm just so happy to be here. I'm glad that there's welcoming faces here. Um, and we're just enjoying it so far. And, my mother actually told us about San Miguel. We were looking at Cadet the Royal some other places first, but we actually beat her to San Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a family beat, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, but thank you all. Thank you. down the street in San Miguel the first time I was here, and a lady waved me down on the street. She said, hey, you. <laughs> you're like, girl, you need to meet Michelle. <laughs> and it's been just a wonderful experience getting to know everyone. <laughs> and, and watching the community grow, so I'm glad to be here. Welcome back. Thank you guys. Thank you. While we're here, we're going to bring a little of the 
U.S. here too, art-wise. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, Up next. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, hi, my name is Kalina or K on Facebook. Um, I have only been here about a month uh, in San Miguel, so this is my first outing. Nice to see all of you guys. Um, I am from Arkansas. I claim Texas because that's where I grew up. Um, I did a lot of traveling, a couple, of, you know, in Costa Rica and um, Jamaica because I was trying to decide if I wanted to come here because I love Mexico or Costa Rica. Um, when I went back home, I was like, I really, really want to be in Mexico. I've been to Puerto Rico before out there multiple times and. Um, I just decided I was going to go move to Michigan with my cousin, and I said, you know what, let me just go ahead and come on to Mexico <laughs> and just try it out and see how it is to actually live here. So far, I am liking it, um, hoping to meet a lot of other people <laughs> and get into the community, but um, it's very nice to be here. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> okay, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Betty. <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Hello, everybody. I'm Betty and Rita. I'm from Minneapolis. I'm Betty and Rita. I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I cannot tell you how glad I am. Like 22 inches of snow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just been a wonderful experience. 
Um, I've looked at a lot of places as perhaps that second or alternative home. And after 50 years of traveling, this was the best option. Aww. So happy to meet all of you finally. Since the house is finished, I can get out because I had to stay in the house for contractors. Because if you miss them when they finally come, Manana could be next year. Yeah, I see. And that's just the truth. <laughs> That's true. So, um, just good to be with you and get more involved in these wonderful activities that you all work with. Absolutely. Welcome. Uh, that was awesome. I'm so excited. Everyone's here. Beautiful, beautiful. So when we're finished eating, Miss Cynthia's gonna do a reading for Black History Month. And Jackie, I mean you all, Danielle, if you wanna sing something. Yeah, let's do it. Yes. Okay. Enjoy your meal. In the late 1800s, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and then from my favorite author, Toni Morrison, um, the first part of her last book. So I'm gonna begin with Dunbar, and I'm gonna give you a little background. He was born in 1872. He was a poet, a novelist, and a short story writer. He wrote stories and verse when he was a child and first published, and first published in a newspaper when he was just 16 years old. He also wrote the lyrics for Indahomey, which was the first all African African American musical on Broadway. His poetry was often written in dialect and received international recognition. So I'm gonna read one of those poems and it's called Encouragement. Who that knocking at the door? Why I Johnson, yes for sure. Come in I, I's mighty glad you come down. I thought you was mad at me about the other night and was staying away for spite. Say now, was you mad for true? Cause I kinda laughed at you. Speak up, Ike. Express yourself. Well, ain't no use in looking sad and making out you mad. If you're going to be so glum, wonder why you ever come. I don't like nobody around who just shuts their mouth and frown. Oh, man, now, don't act a dunce. Can't you talk? I told you once. Speak up, Ike. Express yourself. What you come here for tonight? Body think your head ain't right. I's done all I can do. Dress particular just for you. Reckon I'd have better wore my old ragged, ragged calico. After all the pains I took, can't you tell me how I look? Speak up, Ike, and express yourself. Oh, bless my soul. I plumb forgot telling you about Tiddly Scott. Don't you know come Thursday night she want to marry Lucius White? And Miss Liza says, I always was. Heap sight, likely in her. And she'll buy me something new if I wants to marry too. Speak up, I, and express yourself. Now I could marry in a week if the man I like to speak. Tend this fat presents, they'll be fine, but they wouldn't equal mine. Him that gets me for a wife, will be will be happy. You bet your life. I has had offers. Some ain't quit. But I hasn't married yet. Speak up, Ike, and express yourself. Ike, I loves you. Yes, I does. Use my choice and always was. Laughing at you ain't no harm. Come on, doggy. Where's your arm? Hug me closer there, that's right. Wasn't you an awful sight having me to beg you so? Now ask me what you wants to know. Speak up, Ike, and express yourself. So that's Dunbar. So now we're gonna skip ahead more than 100 years to Toni Morrison, who was the first black female editor in fiction at Random House and played a major role in bringing black literature into the mainstream. She published her first novel, The Bluest Eye, and received national attention when her third novel, The Song of Solomon, won the National Book Critics Award 
um, and Song was also the first book of the, was selected as the first book of the month main selection since the 40s. She had an illustrious career. 11 novels, three plays, a book of poems, a book of literary criticism, and the libretto for the opera, Mar uh, Margaret Garner. Her numerous awards include the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and the Nobel Prize in Literature. So this is a little longer. Stay with me here. This is the very beginning of God Help the Child. And this is the mother, sweetness, talking. It's not my fault. So you can't blame me. I didn't do it and I have no idea how it happened. It didn't take more than an hour after they pulled her out from between my legs to realize something was wrong, really wrong. She was so black, she scared me. Midnight black, Sudanese black. Now I'm light-skinned with good hair, what they call high yellow, and so is Lula Ann's father. Ain't nobody in my family anywhere near that color. Tar is the closest I can think of, and yet, her hair don't go with her skin. It's different, straight, but a little curly, like them naked tribes in Australia. You might think she's a throwback, but a throwback to what? My grandmother? You should have seen her, passed for white and never said another word to any one of her children. Any letters she got from my mother or my aunts, she sent back unopened. Finally, they got the message of no message and let her be. Now all the mulatto types and quadroons did that back in the day, if they had the right kind of hair. Can you imagine how many white folks have Negro blood running in their run running and hidden in their veins? Guess, 20% I heard. My own mother, Lula, Lula Mae, could have passed easy, but she chose not to. And she told me the price she paid for that decision. When she and my father went to the courthouse to get married, there were two Bibles, and they had to put their hands on the one reserved for Negroes. The other one was for white people's hands, the Bible. Can you beat that? My mother was a housekeeper for a rich white couple. They ate every meal she cooked and insisted she scrub their backs while they sat in the tub. And God knows what other intimate things they, she did for them but no touching the same Bible. Now, some of you probably think it's a bad thing to groom ourselves according to skin color, the lighter the better, in social clubs, neighborhoods, churches, sororities, even colored schools. But how else can you get a little dignity? How else can you avoid being spit on in the drugstore, shoving elbows at the bus stop? walking in the gutter to let white people have a whole sidewalk and charged a nickel at the grocers for a bag, paper bag, that's free to white people, let alone all the name calling. I heard all about it and much, much more. But because my mother's color, because of my mother's color, she wasn't stopped from trying on hats in the department store or using the ladies' room. And my father could try on shoes in the front of the store not in the back room. Neither one of them would let them themselves drink from a colored only fountain, even if they were dying of thirst. I hate to say it, but from the very beginning in the maternity ward, the baby, Lula Ann, she embarrassed me. Her birth skin was pale like all the other babies, even African ones, but it changed fast. I know I went crazy for a minute because once, well, just for a few seconds, I held a blanket over her face and pressed down, but I couldn't do it, no matter how much I wish she hadn't been born that terrible color. I even thought about giving her away to an orphanage someplace, and I was scared to be one of those mothers who put their babies on church steps. All I know is that for me, nursing her was like having a pickaninny sucking on my teeth. I went to bottle feeding as soon as I got home. My husband, Louis, is a porter. And when he got off the rails, he looked at me like I was really crazy. 
and looked at her like she was from the planet Jupiter. He wasn't a cussing man. So when he said, God damn it, what the hell? I knew we were in trouble. Thank you. <laughs> if you want to pull up the words, you can. Um, just going to be doing the very first. Uh, yeah, because that's the one I remember. <laughs> I think that's the most popular. Um, so, yeah. Lift every voice and sing till I can Sorry, everyone. 